In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. It got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Shield A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than $10,000 to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose, U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call 800-471-3287. U.S. Tax Shield. boo raw. Yes. <laughs> 800-471-3287 Hi folks, we've been clear for takeoff Attention Patriots Great Nation Rising Radio is about to begin Please return your republic to its original position and prepare for takeoff. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. It's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. Good evening, Patriots. Welcome back to another Thursday night of the reddest hour on radio. This is Red Nation Rising Radio. We are so happy to have you with us. I'm Lou. I'm Jared. Thanks so much for joining us. And uh, this our show is all about you. It's your chat room. Please give us your questions. Tonight we have Michael Bowen of uh, Coalition for a Stronger America. So uh, you guys were all very heavily involved in the uh, kind of grassroots movement against Obama trade, I like to call it, because they moved the acronyms around so much we couldn't keep track of them. But TPA, TPP, those guys, you remember. So Michael and his wife Stephanie and their Coalition for a Strong America was also very involved in that. And and they're also very involved in tax reform and things like that. And he'll be joining us tonight. We'll be talking to him um, as planned, hopefully, about what they're doing, what makes their organization different, and um, what they're, you know, how they're changing the conversation on the Hill. And boom. You have got you guys have been dropping the boom as usual on all those people that um, run our government, run our country, or run it into the ground, depending on your point of view, are in Arkansas. Uh, thanks for for uh, letting us know about the FBI report on um, Middle Eastern men intimidating U.S. military families. I think this is something that we're all really interested in. Um, this was going on in Colorado, Colorado and Wyoming. My guess is it's probably going on um, in a lot of other places. It, it, you know, it's 
it was to be expected. We were warned it was going to happen. We pretty much, you know, believed it. But um, as a lot of other things go with our military and our veterans, unfortunately, people don't pay attention to it until, you know, something happens. So um, thanks for letting us know about that. Just, you know, tomorrow's Red Friday. Wear your red and support those military members that are so important to the freedom that we enjoy and that we love so much, and which is why we're here. Going to give a shout out to r and Utah. Um, I, in response to a, a, a tweet about Senator Reed's moral compass, this is just hilarious. So this might have been my funniest tweet of the week and definitely... <laughs> Something really funny coming from you guys. Um, let me see if I can read this right. Reed doesn't have a moral compass. He used the phrase because he's a Democrat and lying about Republicans comes naturally. So that is kind of a moral compass, right? It's Maybe it points south when it should point north, but it's still a compass. It's just pointing in the wrong direction, right, Jared? Yeah, right. You're right. A moral compass pointing in the right, wrong direction. R and R Virginia, thank you uh, for your tweet to uh, Jim Tweeter, Treacher as well about Planned Parenthood. Um, it changes his website on the hack, and I think we talked about this last week as well. And I uh, wanted to bring it up again because they're still moving that homepage around, and they're still tweaking. The uh, the appearance of that homepage and how they're actually using it to fundraise. Have you noticed this, Jared? Yeah, and I also STEM Express has took their site down for half a day when the first video came out, and they've been altering their menus on their site too. It, it's the strangest thing. And Jared, you've worked with web development. I've worked with web development. We both know that things don't. Things don't happen. Things don't change on the website at the drop of a hat. I don't care how bit small your website is. And certainly if you're a corporation, that doesn't happen. There's There are plans. There are requirement documents. There are uh, development meetings. Right. This, there's this logs. Is a contingent. Any event yeah. that happens, there's plenty of logs. And they haven't furnished any of that. Right, and if there were, it was really a hack, it was really um, a negative event or a DDoS or whatever it was, there would have been logs that they could produce to say, oh, no, yes, we were really hacked. But these are crazy things moving around. These look like developmental changes on their sites that they're trying to make look like they're hacked. And uh, just pay attention. When you're... I'll, I want all of our listeners to pay attention to what's going on there because... Um, Pulling the wool over our eyes has gotten to be an everyday event for some people in our government, for some people that work with people in our government. And it's not cool, and it's not okay with us, and we're not going to going to really stand for it. So with that in mind, there are a couple of blogs that we wanted to point out for you as well. Um, politically Incorrect did a, a really, um, you know, I found it kind of entertaining recap of the Clinton body count. Um I, I know that it's really it's a really big thing to a lot of people. All of the you know the trails of of dead bodies that they've left behind, but it's really sad for the families of those people. And I want us to remember that for one thing. But the other thing is that regardless of of how many conspiracy theories or how many deaths or how many suicide, there the worst thing about the Clintons is that you can prove is their policies. Their policies are really clear. They're out there. There's no question. It's not a conspiracy theory. They're very open about them. Take what um, Hillary said about Planned Parenthood this week and roll from there. And you don't, you don't need a body count, but that still is a really interesting blog. So take a look at it. And also one from Common Core on, or one from Linda Murphy about uh, some of the things that are going on with our with our education system that were late to call them Common Core. As we know, she's an expert in that. And um, it also kind of goes back to things that our government is doing that they slide by here and there. They'll tell you that it's A when it's actually B. So uh, those are two great blogs that you can read that are really educational. And um, Linda's blog on, on some of the 
the current education legislation was very informative. So I challenge you to read those two. And I believe, Jared, we're going to take a quick break and come back in a couple of minutes with Michael Bowen. Yep. Back in two minutes. Back in two. This is JD. And this is Stacy. Join us Tuesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, for Game On. Remember, lock up the children and the old folks. Game On, the home of conservative and conservative. Where no one is safe, no one is fair, not even the hosts. Oh, like that was supposed to be a spin, spin cycle. cycle. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. We love you anyway. Right round, baby. Self right round. Self-monitoring Ebola anyway. radio strikes again. <laughs> anyway... Anybody uh, see the host monkey? Today. Where's the host monkey? Where's the host monkey? For God's sake, I need an antidote. Just anyway, do your rant. Let's pop out of the second. <laughs> Find us on Twitter at JD and Stacy. You're listening to K98talk.com. But I think it's time we ask ourselves if we still know the freedoms that were intended for us by the founding fathers. We lose freedom here. There's no place to escape to. This is the last stand on earth. We are today facing a full-fledged constitutional crisis. The answer is not a monarch from 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Whether we believe in our capacity for self-government or whether we abandon the American Revolution and confess that a little intellectual elite in a far distant capital can plan our lives for us better than we can plan them ourselves. You and I are told increasingly we have to choose between a left or right. Well, I'd like to suggest there is no such thing as a left or right. There's only an up or down. K98 Talk. And we're back. Lou, I think we have Michael on the line. Sorry about that, Jared. (laughs) Hi. Sorry, Michael. I I was listening to the music, and I was waiting (laughs) for our regular intro, and it just went right past me. Thanks so much, Jared. Um, Hi, Michael. How are you? I'm great. I was rocking out with you, so I'm I'm right there with you. I know. Jared will get you with that music every now and then. I'll start getting <laughs> into it, and I'll miss the cue. So um, we're really happy to have you here. We're um, really interested to hear about the things that you're, you and Stephanie are doing with the Coalition for a Strong America. First, I want to say that your Twitter handle is at strong underscore America one, correct? Yes. Yes, correct. Yes. And your website is coalition for a strong dot com. That is correct. Yes. Wonderful. So first I wanna let have you tell us um a, a little bit about your organization and how you're different. Well, you know, when Stephanie and I decided we wanted to form Strong America, um we both have very extensive backgrounds in politics. From a little bit of a different angle, she comes from um, Glenn Beck's 912 Project, uh, which was the second largest Tea Party organization in the country. And I was a former state chair for the NRCC, uh, quote unquote, the establishment. And I got really fed up with the establishment and I quit the NRCC and I was like, to hell with it, you know, I, I can't deal with these people anymore. So we decided we wanted to take a different angle towards activism. We like to refer to ourselves as the lobbyists of the people. We do not have uh, corporate sponsorship. Uh, in a, and as part of that, we don't have an agenda. We don't have a corporate agenda. So when we uh, go to Capitol Hill, we get a lot, uh, a much different year than a lot of people do. We get a lot more credibility because we're not pushing a specific agenda. Probably the thing that makes us the most uh, the differentiator that makes us the most uh, from any other organization is the fact that we're literally on the hill every other week. Right. Right. So, you know, if if you're a political donor and you're throwing, you know, a hundred bucks at another organization, chances are that's going to go into some kind of a PR, you know, plant ad or something like that. When they give us, you know, our average donation is sixty bucks. When they give us sixty bucks. They're literally paying for us to be up on the hill kicking dust. So uh, there's not a lot of groups that are doing that. We've been doing that forever. 
we've been up there, and we typically are up there every other week. Uh, fortunately, right now we're on recess, so it's been kind of a nice break. Yeah, right. Exactly. When they get a break, you get a break, right? Um, they yeah. take plenty yeah. of them. So, uh, but I'm sure that you probably find things to occupy your time and 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 work pretty hard getting ready for things. So you call yourself the uh, the lobbyist for the people. Yeah. You and so you, and you're actually on the hill, and you were very involved in uh, what I like to call Obama trade. Maybe yeah, you can, yeah. maybe you can fill me in a little bit on the um, shuffling of acronyms. Uh, and, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I mean they clearly it was an attempt to confuse us, right? Because it, it they moved the acronyms around on that, attached this bill, d- detached that bill. That was crazy. It, have you ever seen anything like that before? Or was that just me? No, I mean the maneuvering was ridiculous. Um, the political chess game that was played was it wasn't even ridiculous, it was sickening, uh, quite honestly. But the you know, we were successful in getting uh fast track, which is the TPA acronym, Trade Promotion Authority. We were successful in delaying that for well over a year. And unfortunately, at the very end of that process, and here's what's interesting is we're going up against the Chamber of Commerce, right? So it's, you know, it's Strong America versus, and there's some other groups we work with as well, but Strong America leading the charge against the, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, which obviously is a very powerful, well-funded organization. Right. So um, they were able to get just enough votes, buy off just enough people at the very end to get fast track put through. That was crushing. We actually thought we had, we thought we had the whip to, to defeat that. And we didn't. So that was extremely disappointing. Right. So we, did like, too. Here's what we thought but, we thought we had it too. Yeah. We we were pretty disappointed yeah, with that as well, Michael. Yeah, I mean you guys helped us out greatly in that effort, uh, which I can't thank you enough for. But here's the interesting thing though, is that um you know, we exposed what's actually in TPP to Congress. And through that effort, um you know, Obama's got, he's got fast track now. But I don't know if you saw, I'm sure you did see last week in Maui, it blew up. Canada has um, threatened to walk away from the deal based on the IFDS provision uh, and a number of other things that we actually exposed. So they were expecting to conclude TPP last week and there's no deal. So despite the fact that Obama won on fast track, we so far have still won on TPP. Well, now, and, and that's the, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, and, and I think with the timing, with the election coming up, I don't think they can get this done. Well, I think you're right about that, and and I think that it it definitely is a very good thing that they haven't been able to ram through TPP yet. But the fast track is dangerous. It's incredibly dangerous. I mean, and here's the, here's, here's the funny thing is people, I, you know, because we're conservatives, everyone thinks we're just Obama bashing. It's not that at all. I don't think I want a Republican person to have that power either. Um, the founding fathers were very, very good about setting up the Constitution to protect uh, this country from having an abuse of power. Yeah. How and why this Congress can give Obama that kind of power it's beyond explanation. Right. And I, I, I can't get it. I, 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 I can't wrap my head around it. I, why the a Republican Congress can do it. I would certainly understand why a Democrat Congress would do it for this right. president and hope to just turn it back over, you know, potentially right. when, when the administration changes. But it was bizarre. I've never seen anything like it. I've got a couple of questions coming out of the chat room. Actually, um, they want to know who pays your bills. How can you afford to pay your bills and be on the hill? And, you know, we know that those of us who do this don't really get paid for it. I'm more than happy to answer that question. We we do take donations, uh, which covers probably maybe 25 percent of our entire budget. Tops, and and we have a real estate development business that uh, 
we run, that's our main business, and we pay for it out of our own pockets. So you're investing in this effort because not only because you believe in it, but because you think it's going to make everything better, right? You know, here's the thing is, you know, Stephanie and I both have this, um, this extensive history and access. And when you have access like that, you know, when Jeff Sessions comes to you and says, hey, I want you to read this bill and I want you to tell me what we need to fix on it. What, what do I need to know about it? There's a responsibility in that. You know, how do you how do you walk away from that knowing that your kids are going to inherit a world that is, you know, worse than our world right now? So, you know, it's one of those things that may sound cliche and stupid, but we do this because we're passionate about the country. We want to, we want to make the middle class great again. And without a great middle class, you don't have a country. Our right. middle class is a our middle class is evaporated. So. You know, I, I you know I love Trump's saying. You know, make America great again. That was actually one of our sayings from you know a model we used to use, but we we used to you know isolate it to the middle class. So that's what we're really all about. And um, you know, the funny thing is, people come to us all the time and they're like, "Wouldn't it be great if the Koch brothers wrote you a quarter million dollar check?" Mm, not really. <laughs> That means I have an agenda now, you know? Yes. That, mean, that, I, yeah. that, means, that means I'm a mouthpiece for the Koch brothers. And by the way, I like the Koch brothers. I don't have any problem with the Koch brothers. But yeah, they're, I, they're I good libertarians, but, yeah. but I get your point. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't, you, we don't want to be mouthpieces. And, you know, the one thing that we have done very successfully on the Hill um, is, you know, we work, with, we work with groups on the left regularly. You know, uh, we work on issues that are American issues and not red or blue issues, even though we are conservative in our values. So that's what, that's, that's how we do it. Yeah. And one of the other questions was, you know, then what do you do with the work or the information or, or or whatever you're getting? And I, you know, I don't want you, I'm not going to ask you to go too far into anything that uh, might be a little bit sensitive to you or, or that, that you wouldn't, want to go into, but I, I, but I do want to say from a Red Nation Rising perspective that you have helped us to do some of the things that we wanted to do and some of our efforts and some of our strategies um, were aided by you and Stephanie and your team. So the, they don't just go up to the hill and lobby they work with other organizations to put the information that they get to good use and vice versa. Would that be fair, Michael? That's absolutely fair. In fact, it's part of an effort that we're trying to expand upon as far as how we, you know, and this is like the next phase as we go back. We'll be back after the session's back in, but we're going to start disseminating um, our notes from our Hill visits to our key strategic partners um, you know, in detail, like this is who we met with. This was a discussion. Just, you know, here are the action items we can take out of that. Because you know, we have an unusual level of access. And that, you know, that's, that's a very valuable tool when it's used in the correct way. The problem is, you know, you got all the K Street guys that are using it in the incorrect way. So, you know, we want to focus on what kind of legislation can we promote that is good for the middle class? And what legislation do we need to oppose that is bad for the middle class? And that's really our objective. Well, and, and I think that's, it's a, it's a great objective and it's a shared objective and it's a, an, an objective that a lot of organizations share. And I think that really what we should look at doing, this is my opinion, what we should look at doing going forward is how do we all work together? How do we yeah. build a coalition? And how do we yeah. make each other stronger? Yes, and absolutely. yeah, yeah. So um, there was... But the one, here's, here, here's the one thing I want the audience to, to take away from this is that the reason why we view ourselves as the lobbyists for the people is because we have an a lifestyle that we have established that allows us the flexibility to be there physically and we can support ourselves. So, you know, we want to hear from the audience. We want to hear from people. We want to hear what's important. 
We want the emails. We want the text. We want, we want the feedback. Like, all right, I really want you to hammer on this because we're doing it for the middle class. That's what we're doing it for. Right. Yeah, you're doing it for the for America, for the for people. America. Yeah, exactly. The average American, um, the average American, to be honest, all they can really do is call their representative. And I'm not dismissing that because that's very important. It's extremely important for them to call their representatives. But the average American cannot go to D.C. and knock on their representative's door and say, hey, I want to talk to you about this, you know. And it makes a difference. It, it makes you know, a big difference. It's really, it's a lot harder to tell someone no face to face. So back to trade a little bit. So we talked about yeah. what you do and how you do it. Tell me how trade makes America or, or the something like TPP makes America weaker. How do these backroom tra- trade deals, how is that <laughs> making America weaker? Well, first of all, number one, jobs. Every trade deal we've ever done has exported jobs overseas, period. There's no debate about that. The facts are the facts. You can look up the stats. No trade deal has ever benefited America. Um, Secondly, and and to take a step back, the objective of a trade agreement is to, we have the most valuable consumer market in the world. So what, what we have to offer is we can open up our markets to other countries in exchange for the fact that they're going to give us something back in return. They, this is the theory, by the way. So, you know, they've got markets that are more efficient than us for maybe rice or whatever, you know. Um, but part of that deal is then, in theory, you should have to raise your standards to America. So if you're a third world country, you need to focus on human trafficking and uh, food safety standards, et cetera, to bring your products back into America. What has happened through all the trade agreements is that we have lowered America's standards. And, and this, uh, you can read, you can go to our website at coalitionforstrongamerica.com uh, and see the actual document, the, the chapters that we have obtained for TPP, where we lower our standards to the least common denominator. So we have to accept Vietnamese seafood, which is raised in pig feces. Oh, God. But that, no, I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. That, <laughs> yeah, that's I not got an <laughs> So by the way, I just ruined your seafood menu for the rest of you right now. Yeah, but, I was uh, <laughs> okay so much for dinner. Um, <laughs> so, but, you, but um, it's true, but it's very true. And, and we saw a lot of that with the latest trade deal. You know... Between um, uh, TPP and TISA, which is the uh, uh, the services agreement, uh, it backdoors amnesty. You know, we can sit here and have this talk. Donald Trump's having this talk about immigration amnesty. Listen, it's already done. It's in TPP. It's in TISA. You go to our website. You can read them both. Those documents that are on our website, by the way, Congress didn't have. We hand-delivered them to Congress. We hand deliver them to the representatives and the senators. Ted Cruz, when he reversed his decision on fast track, that's because we sat down with him and we handed him a copy of TISA. Of TISA. And he it, said so. And he admitted that he, yeah. he actually said he changed his mind because he had a look at TISA. So that, you know, Do you know why he had a look at TISA? Because you delivered we, it. We sat down to, with him and, and made him read it. Wow. The fact that you would have to make a representative read a piece of anything that has to do with legislation that they're voting on is enough to make my head spin. So while my head is spinning, (laughs) while my head is spinning, I think that we're going to go to a break and let my head settle down just a little bit. (laughs) And we will be back in just a few minutes with more of Michael Bowen. K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level 
or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget. Web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com. Wondering why you're up early with us on a Sunday morning making a cocktail? News lately got you drinking? Hung over from the mainstream media by Sunday? We are, and we got you covered. We sure do. We got your hangover cure for those weekly news blues. So sit back, top off your mimosa, and add some Baileys to that coffee. Take a match to your copy of the New York Times. Light, funny, and oh yeah, news with booze. And a lot of laughter. Welcome to Bloody Marys and Broadsheets. Abolish the IRS. Take all 125,000 IRS agents and put them on our southern border. Look, Ma, no hands. That's how you do it on the hill, Michael, isn't it? No hands. Look, Mom. What's that? That's all right. <laughs> That's all right. It was the, the music that was leading into the break. Oh, no, yeah. I was totally rocking into that, too. Yeah. On yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, making a lot of music jokes tonight. So, um, so, we talked about trade. You made my head spin. Um, what do you think that we're going to see in the near future? You mentioned that... TPP is not a done deal. It's not necessarily it's not a done deal. No, the uh, Canada's kicking up its heels. It's, it's threatening to walk, and Canada's got a couple of the biggest markets. And here's the other problem too: is the whole the whole TPP was based on the fact. I mean, it's it's a it's really a bilateral deal between us and Japan. And Japan brought along a bunch of its cousins. The only ma- market that matters is Japan, and the only markets that mattered were the uh, ag markets and the auto markets. So when Abe was here, how many months ago? I don't know, was that three or four months ago? Abe made it very clear, we're not opening up ag, we're not opening up auto. So the, the very basis of of why this deal even exists evaporated. Canada's walking from it. So, you know... Obama's going to try and ram it through, obviously, because he needs it for a legacy deal. And he needs it for other reasons, too, other international finance reasons. But um, I just think timing-wise, this is going to be difficult. Well, talk about those. So you said he needs it for international finance reasons. Well, you know, China just formed uh, what's known as the AIIB, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. So, you are you familiar with the the World Bank, the IMF, and the yeah. ADB? Those are the three major world banks, quote unquote. So, collectively, those world banks have about a half uh, trillion dollars in assets. Uh, so, the AIIB, China just set up, has a trillion dollars in assets. They have fifty six trading partners. They created this bank. Um, geez, I want to say 2013. And in two years, they have 56 trading partners, including every trade, trading partner that's on TPP is part of AIIB. Excluding Japan, which is under consideration, they've applied to be a part of it. So in other words, the, the financial center of the world is shifting to AIIB. So it's not coincidental that we're trying to do this deal with TPP with 11 Asian countries that are all part of AIIB. China's the number one currency manipulator in the world. Right. Think about that. All of our European allies are part of AIIB. Germany. Why does Germany want China's money? Because it's 40% undervalued. Germany can go borrow China's money 
put up an auto manufacturer at a 40% discount under Sell America. So it's cheap money. It's cheap money. And mark my words, Obama will end up at AII. Post president. Working there, you mean? Yeah. That's a good one. Okay, we're going to put that prediction down from for for the books and definitely credit for credit you for it if it happens. I, I've I've always said, you know, or I've said for quite a while it would be some international organization, but um you might really have nailed it with or nailed it down there. So, um really wouldn't surprise me. And then you you mentioned something else. He needs it for financial reasons and he needs it for a legacy reason. So, you know, a lot of things are about a president's legacy. You think that's part of what this is? Uh, you know, he, he the the problem with this whole deal is it's pack it's packaging. I call it packaging. Mm-hmm. He packages this as free trade. It's not. It has nothing to do with trade, by the way. There's 29 chapters. Five chapters deal with trade. The other 24 deal with domestic policy, including immigration and healthcare and everything else. And you know, TISA, they did the same thing with TISA, the services agreement. They packaged it as deregulation. So isn't that great? Now, now, as as you and I, as free traders, we like deregulation, right? Well, this goes sure. With, this, <laughs> to a point, to a point, right? Right, so, right. So, so TISA, uh, you got to go read TISA. It, it literally, uh, you know, an unlicensed Malaysian air mechanic. Uh, could could be uh, lawfully allowed to work on our planes in America. So your dentist may not need a, a license anymore. So your electrician may not need a license anymore. That's so not Randy, my idea. So That's Dr. Randy idea Arrington, yeah, so Dr. Randy Arrington is actually sitting with, with me here. We're at Red State in Atlanta, and he's sitting here with me. So are you telling me that he could get in a plane tomorrow to fly it and it could have been worked on by an unlicensed mechanic in not, Malaysia. Not not quite, but when Tisa not quite. So, so, but when Tisa passes, and they're when Tisa passes, Tisa, oh. when Tisa passes, that is that is what could happen. Yeah. Wow. And and, and, and you know it's 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 funny people. You know we're in Congress. We're telling these people. You know we're telling representatives, senators, and they're like, no, this. There's no way that's possible. And then we bring them the documents, like read this damn thing, and they're like, "Oh, wow." So that begs so, the question: What if if they're not at least reading the documentation that you have available to you, right? So if you have it available to you, there's no reason that of all the staffers that they have on the hill, that one of those staffers couldn't have found it. Well, here's here's the reality. The reality is there's 300 bills introduced every week. They, by law, the representatives are only allowed uh, 18 staffers between district and D.C. And uh, the senators, it's more, I want to say it's like 25 or something like that. I don't know the exact number, but slightly more for the senators. But the volume of what goes through there, you, you and I couldn't keep up with it. So there's just no way. So... And, and, you know, to be honest, that's one of the reasons why they like Strong America so much is because they know we don't have an agenda behind us other than trying to make the middle class strong again. And they'll they'll hand us bills and they'll say, well, go mark this up. Tell me what we need to know. But that's really sad. And and, and It's very sad. Yeah. And maybe it's that. Why do we need 300 bills a week? There, and I've made this comment and I've heard this comment. We're better off when Congress is not in session because then yeah. they're not doing anything. And we're right. better off when they're not doing anything. <laughs> I kind of like the the, uh, the Texas system myself because when you do it like half time, you know, in comparison to the rest of the country, it forces you to prioritize. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Part-time legislatures do much better than much better. Yeah, much better because you do have to prioritize. You can't do 300 bills a day. That's ridiculous. It sounds like to me that maybe 
one really good thing to do would be to put a cap on the number of bills they could introduce a day. Well, you know, uh, who was it? Was it Cruz or Rand Paul? One of the two um, actually introduced a read the bill bill. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, maybe that was Paul. I forget who that was. But anyway, it requires so many days for it, for each page, you know. Yeah, so they had a chance to read the bills. But, um, they, you know, there there are, I will tell you, there are some really good guys up on Capitol Hill that are mission-oriented and try and read everything they possibly can. And you, you just can't do it. I mean, and their staffers, you know, you want to see the saddest thing about D.C. is go, go meet with some of the staffers straight out of college, never had a real job. Yeah. And you're trying to teach them about how you need to run the free world. <laughs> I almost think they do that for a reason, too. And I'm not going to get into that. But why don't you tell us, what, without naming names, because I know you can't really do that. And I would never ask you to do that. But how do you tell who's the good guy, who's trying to do the right thing, and who just could really care less? They're, they're collecting their paycheck till they get their pension. It's it's obvious with the you know it's obvious with every single one of them. It is obvious with every single one of them who they are. You know, there's there's the the champions like the Jim Jordans of the world, and you know the Rob Portmans of the world, and then you know and the Jeff Sessions of the world. Ted Cruz is now on my good guy list again, <laughs> and then yeah, and then you know and then there's the there's a serious disappointment, and and I, we do name names. And that's part of our policy at Strong America is we call people out. You know, we we called out Ted Cruz publicly. We called out Paul Ryan publicly. Paul Ryan, you know, was bashing us every other day on the Hill. Everything we would come out with, pointing out a flaw in his argument, he would have a press release on the next day. So, you know, me and Love is probably uh, my biggest disappointment. Um, she totally sold out to establishment the minute she got there. Um, you know, and, and, but, but then you have the chameleons in the middle. (laughs) Those are the most frustrating. Like, you know what? It's, it's, it's like guys like Bernie Sanders. You know, I don't, I don't agree with anything Bernie Sanders says, but I know where he stands. There's no BS. There's no BS there. So I respect that. At least you're telling me you're misguided. (laughs) Truth, <laughs> you know, but it's but still, like, that uh, he's not. At least he's not lying. His his no, he really, believes, <laughs> yeah. he really believes his own BS. He really believes it. It's like it's bizarre, but he believes it. So yeah, yeah. he's wrong, guy, but he believes he's it. <laughs> totally wrong, totally wrong. But you know what? He's in his own little world. So yeah, um, it's the guys. I'll tell you, the, the guy who probably frustrates me the most is Chuck Schumer. He's he flip flops forty times on any given bill, depending on what he's going to get. Right. You know, and, yeah. of co- and of course, this last week, you know, I didn't even know he was related to Amy Schumer. Sure. This whole thing about the gun control stuff is like, give me a break. You know. Right. Yeah. Right. Definitely. But uh, yeah, he he comes he comes across. He's obvious. So what you, what you're telling us is when we see that. Mm, he's a little swarmy, squirmy, or you know, oh. he's not. Yeah, or or you know, somebody like Jim Jordan. Um, it, when we see that kind of champion, Mark Meadows, that's real. Mark Meadows, yes, yeah, that's real. Mark Meadows is real. Jim Jordan is real. Well, Mark These Meadows is Tar Heel, so you know he's real. Yeah, I'm telling you. I mean, we meet we meet with these guys, and and there's just a sincerity, and they're like, you know. They bank us up and down. They're like, you know, just keep, you know. It's like old home week when, when we go into the right offices. You know, they're like, oh, thank God, a friendly face. You know, come on in, <laughs> you know. And yeah, that's neat. There, so, so there are actually some good people in Washington, but the odds are stacked against them. That's the reality. And I think that might be one of the saddest things of all is that you do have people like Jim Jordan, Mark Meadows, um, you know, even Ted Cruz, who's sometimes on our good guy list, 
that are working really hard and they're trying hard and they're trying to do the right thing, Rand Paul, and it's yes. yeah. the the system and the establishment is making it as difficult for them as possible. And all they're trying to do is do the right thing for the people who elected them. Mark Meadows had a comment that, um, Oh, what did he say? That, that the polls and the administration didn't tell him how, or the, or the chamber of commerce baby didn't tell him how to vote that the people of North Carolina did. Yeah. I love so, that. That's what we need. You know, so dialing back to the trade issue, the trade deals do nothing but benefit big pharma, big ag, and the multinationals. Those are the benefactors of the trade deal. Right. So who feeds the U.S. Chamber of Commerce? And, and what people need to understand is that the U.S. Chamber of Commerce is different than your local Chamber of Commerce. Your local Chamber of Commerce does a lot of good things. Your U.S. Chamber of Commerce is a farce. Because your local is, Chamber of Commerce works with local businesses. Right, right, exactly. So the U.S. Chamber of Commerce is a sellout to big nationals. And, it, you know, so I, I'm somewhat surprised that we've been as successful against the U.S. Chamber as we've been. Yeah. Um, you've, been you've been a huge part of that, obviously, at Red Nation, no question about that, that we couldn't have done, we couldn't have, Delayed it as long as we could we, without your, no, without know, your help. You know what? We're going to do it again, and we'll keep doing it. And we're coming up against a hard break as much as I hate it. Um, I think that... Here's the thing, I, here's, here's the thing though. Is I think uh, it went sideways in Maui. It went totally sideways in Maui. So I think, I think we're in pretty good I, I'm not sure they can really... Because if they bring it up right now... This thing is so bad. If they bring that up right now, uh, this close to the election, then it's not going to go through. So you think we bought the time until at least until after the election? Right. Yeah. I, I think we did. That's good. I think we did. So that, that, yeah. that's, a, that, that's a minor victory, but minor victories sooner or later turn into wins, you know? Yes, absolutely. That is, you win a war battle by battle. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, yeah. And, and that's kind of the way that you have to do it. And we want to help you guys. We want to work with you guys. Our team um, really cared about that issue. Another issue that you'll be working on, I, I know, or you do some work on, is tax reform. That's something else that yes. we care very much Absolutely. about. Yeah, so Absolutely. we want you guys to to keep in touch. Maybe even have you on again, Michael, to to talk about what you're doing as it's coming up. Um, you know, since we're, I wish we had some more time to talk tonight. We're, but I'm always, I feel like my life is up against a heartbreak. <laughs> but we're, um, Listen, but, yeah, we could we could do a whole show on tax reform if you want, because uh, we've got a great plan. It's not my plan. I'm not going to take authorship of it. It's a very good friend of ours, uh, Rich Lowry, who. Uh, did the Herman King 999 plan. It's on our website, coalitionforstrongmarket.com. Go look at it. Go read it. Absorb it. And actually, I tell people it's so wonky. you got to read it like six times. But it, um, it works. It works. Well, that's great. And we might have you back on the show just to do a whole show on tax reform because it is – you know, money is the root of all evil. Taxes are the root of a lot of our problems. So not just collecting the money and where you're taking it from, but where you're giving it to. And I wish that I did not have to say goodbye to you, but I got to wrap up the show. So, but I can I promise you, yeah, I can, I'm sure that we will have you back. I understand. Hey, it was a pleasure. Loved it. And yes. uh, we'll do it again. Okay, great. Thanks so much. You can hang on while we while we say goodbye to our audience. And thanks, you guys, so much for joining us again on this Thursday. We'll be back next week, same bat time, same bat channel, Thursday yeah. at 8 o'clock on K98 Talk. We got um, Kelvin Smythe coming on next week. He wrote the book, The End of Prejudice. He's a, he's a smart guy, good political mind, should be a great show. So tune in next week, 8 p.m. Eastern, and you can hear a replay on... <laughs> Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. All right, so join us for him. I, I read one of his articles that is on Rebooting Liberty, and my first thought was, oh, my gosh, that sounds just like me. 
so he, he writes and he he sounds like us he's he writes what you're thinking so be sure and join us next week on right here yeah. and thanks michael we'll see you all next week michael. keep rising keep rising patriots When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on wash and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-513-6154. That's 1-800-513-6154. Again, 1-800-513-6154. Call now. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. 